find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 96. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters here in Pittsburgh, PA, in the Mayhem Studios. And, uh, and, and, and where we do a little bit of production here with some local indie groups. And we like to talk about it and with people that we come across on the scene and so much more. With me from San Antonio, Texas, he is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. Dropping <laughs> the smiles on you. He's at Eamon 2 please. Eamon Payton, how you doing? Good. I noticed that's always my my instinct is immediately when the camera switches to me to just give a big smile. Uh, <laughs> so sorry, sorry, uh, video listeners for uh, for jumping out at you. But no, I'm very excited to be back on this week. Always love talking to you wrestling with you, sort. Awesome. And also with us, another guy that every time I put the camera on him, usually on Hangout, he's dancing. It's Mad Mike. Hi, Sork. He's not usually on this show. It's been a while since I've been on it. But he's in the studio, so he gets to hang out. Mm-hmm. There you go. Uh, we're going to be talking about RPGs and world wrestling. Uh, but uh, first, go please check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com uh, for uh, links for subscribing to the show in audio and video formats, as well as the social media with Twitter, Facebook, uh, and uh, the Facebook group. And uh, so many other shows and articles we have going on, including the main Wrestling Mayhem Show. And you can drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0 or the email address of goodtimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Big thanks to our buddy Basic Sickness for the intro and outro music at BasicSickness.com, another Pittsburgh original. And uh, and, and also, please uh, check us out. We're here uh, live around 11 p.m. or so Eastern time at Live.WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And join the rest of the fun at 9 p.m. Eastern time, again, at Live.WrestlingMayhemShow.com for the main show where we talk about non-independent wrestling most of the time. So I'm uh, really excited to get uh, this email or this email this show lined up. Uh, this was uh, something that was presented to us by a fan, Ed Burke, uh, uh, on a, on a big question actually uh, uh, several months ago. So I'm, I'm glad that this connected. So with us on the line, I I don't even know where you're from. I didn't check what time zone you're in, at or anything. Nathan <laughs> Paletta is joining us from MP. I'm sorry, NDPDesign.com. How you doing tonight? I'm great. I'm uh, coming to you from Chicago, Illinois. Nice, nice. You see, the last time I talked to a gaming person and I didn't ask where they were coming from and then realized they had an accent, they were in Scotland. And uh, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't realize how late they were joining us. So, um, but uh, they... just, just an hour, just an hour. It's no problem. Awesome. Uh, so uh, you you represent a, a pretty cool thing, Worldwide Wrestling, the role-playing game. I want to get that in, into that in a moment and deep into role-playing and, and professional wrestling. But first, we like to kind of get to know the people that are, that are making things in the business, whatever the case may be on the show. What What's your earliest memory of getting into uh, uh, pro wrestling? Oh, man. So I have kind of a... Uh, more recent i'm a more recent vintage fan actually uh i didn't get into wrestling until i was in college um which was basically right my roommate at the time was a big fan from like when he was a kid and this was right at the end of the attitude era into the uh the uh you know wwe transition was basically right when i started watching wrestling which is a weird time (laughs) i think compared to a lot of uh a lot of other big wrestling fans trajectory. So I got into, got into it then loved the the action and like kind of the storytelling and the crazy characters fell out of it for a number of years and then came back in, um, like 2010 or so. So kind of modern, you know, into the modern era. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's when I, it, it really hooked me again um, because I spent a lot of my time thinking about storytelling because that's what role-playing games are kind of all about and role-playing game design. A lot of what I do is provide a platform to be able to tell compelling stories. And so those threads really um, pulled together for me. And, and, and so you talked about storytelling and we talked a little bit before you were actually uh, big into uh, 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 graphic design and such. Mm-hmm. Um, can you tell me a little bit about, so, so this is not the only, uh, role-playing game that you've actually put together. No, this is actually my, uh, my very first, um, 
independently designed and published role playing game was 10 years ago this year, actually. So I've been wow. doing this um, for a while now uh, at varying levels. At this point, it's what I do. I'm a, a self employed graphic designer, publisher person. Uh, but yeah, my games are generally targeted at like a specific kind of concept or idea. So I have like a time travel game, uh, a gothic horror game where you play the the victims of a vampire or a creature, but you, you don't play the creature itself. Um, a game where you play a, a giant scrap bot, post-Soviet mechs, uh, all fighting with each other. Um, and, a, you know, a, a whole array of stuff. So I kind of have a catalog of, of um, other games and then it's kind of culminated most recently with worldwide wrestling that's awesome so so you know for somebody like i say i'm kind of modestly into rpg games i've played a couple campaigns nothing you know not them not die hard by any means not as much as some <laughs> of my friends that are still weekly playing their 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 rpg campaigns and, and, and i'm just completely into it I, I look at these books and and they seem really complicated and you know looking at video games i've read up a lot on game design how complicated is it to put together all the rules and everything for an RPG game like this? So in my experience, the, the, the word density is a little misleading because there's generally the concepts. I think once you play a session or play with someone who teaches you the game are pretty straightforward and you pick them up um, and then explaining those concepts to someone coming to it totally cold and not necessarily having played this particular game is where like the word count comes from because you're basically trying to transmit a very oral tradition in text so i think that does throw people where they're like you know this this is a game but look at look how many pages are in there right mm -hmm. um it's not a board game where the rules are all contained on components uh or a video game where the computer is doing all the math for you essentially and all the um, making all the the behind the screen decisions that in a tabletop role playing game you make with your friends. Uh, so this game, like about um, half of the word count, is kind of explaining concepts, talking about uh, what you actually do with dice and and the the, the powers, the moves that interact with each other and drive drive the game along. <clears throat> and then the other half is a lot of uh, actually explanatory material because my the people who come to this game are usually gamers first and wrestling fans second so far in my experience like there's the little intersection of people who love wrestling and ro love role-playing games and that's great and then there's a lot of people who are like oh i'm interested in that i like games wrestling sounds neat i've seen hulk hogan when i was a kid <laughs> um or whatever uh and so there's a lot of material in the book that's like here's how wrestling matches actually like are kind of structured um, here's what it means to be a good guy and a bad guy. Uh, here's what the rules of wrestling match are. So you know how to narrate, um, when you break the rules and not, cause that's important, that kind of stuff that as wrestling fans, we all get it. We were immersed in that. We just know, but I played with people who don't know what a count out is, right. Or don't know that the ref actually has a job to do in structuring the match, not just being there to count a pin or that kind of stuff. And then the rest of it is um, there's a lot of example characters. There's three example um, feds, three three companies that you can set your game in with uh, example characters and stuff, um, and uh, and like all the reference sheets and stuff to print out. So when you're playing, you generally have, you have one sheet of paper that's your character sheet. It's your gimmick, right? Uh, it's front and back, and that has all the rules for your character. And then there's another reference sheet that has all the rules that are shared amongst all the players. Things like cutting promos, um, running into matches, all the stuff that everyone can do, and then the the game master role, the guy you know or girl running the game, creative if you will, <laughs> has their own set of references for um, the GM basing stuff about how to structure the the session and stuff like that. So on the table, it ends up being a bunch of sheets of paper, and then you reference the book every so often when it's like, oh, I cut a promo. And I botched the role, and this other person ran in to interrupt me. How does that actually relate? And then there's a couple, so there's some like edge cases that don't come up all the time. So that's when you end up referencing this text uh, during the game. I don't know if that actually answered your question, but just kind of going into how it's structured and what the actual 
what the words are about. No, no, because um, yeah. the next question was going to be like, well, how do you play this game? Like, how are the rules? Because I know, I know my experience with RPGs are like, I'm walking through a forest or a dungeon and uh, something pops <laughs> up. I swing my sword. Oops, I missed. Now I'm a toad. I'm uh, walking to gorilla position. <laughs> I'm walking the gorilla position. <laughs> do I run into the ring rat? Is that is that what I'm thinking? Or, 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 or can we adapt that Am into I booked it? tonight? <laughs> yeah, well, so... Um, so how it works is, so I'm I'm creative, right? I'm running the game. Right. And right. you guys have all made your character. You've come up with, uh, you know, whatever your, maybe your your favorite E-Fed character or, uh, you know, you've ripped off um, Cesaro or whatever. <laughs> or uh, and so you have your, your character and you've, we've taken about 20 minutes and you've gone through your sheet. You've checked off a couple things. Uh, you have four stats uh, that kind of cover your ability to do all the wrestling things, whether it's talking, actually wrestling, uh, breaking kayfabe, all that stuff. And then you have some special powers that are just your thing. Uh, like the monster is super strong. Uh, the anti-hero can um, do baby face stuff and heal stuff, depending on who else they're facing in the ring, that kind of thing. And then I will book you into a match. I'll be like, you know, you, uh, you two guys, uh, let's describe your entrances. You come in, uh, describe how you get down to the ring, what you do. Are you working at, you know, working the audience? Are you trying to get a pop from the crowd? Are you going directly after this guy? You know, what are you doing? And we've set up, the game also includes um, a whole thing about uh, having heat with each other, which in this game is uh, describing how much your relationship with the other wrestler gets a response from the audience. So it's not about like having uh you know be uh bashing heads backstage or anything necessarily so that's a bit of an abstraction for the purposes of the game but uh so we've built up some heat with you during the character creation you know that this guy used to be, be my tag team partner and they turned on me i'm jealous of this guy's wrestling ability this guy spreads rumors about me backstage all that kind of stuff um so we have that context i book you into matches uh and you guys in the match describe what your characters are doing, building up to the big spot. So it's not, you're not rolling for every punch. You're not rolling for every body slam. You don't have a plus two to missile drop to get, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> you're narrating the story of the match. You know, how are you working that arm? When do you go to, to the outside to get that break? When do you go and appeal to the referee, you know, so your partner can, can choke the guy with the tag rope, all that stuff. When it gets to a big moment that really matters, that's when we roll dice and see how it goes. Do you do well? Do you do okay or a mixed result? Or maybe you get countered? Or do you botch? Um, and then we go on from there. So the dice inform the, the subsequent narration. The narration informs what dice you roll and when and why. Uh, the match wraps up with, again, as creative, I've booked it, right? It's wrestling. I have an idea of who I want to win because... I have the best interests of the company at heart. But you guys can break that booking. You guys can break kayfabe. You can cheat to win. You can do other things that swerve my booking. And then I have to make it look to the imaginary viewing audience like that's how it was all supposed to happen. That was the plan. Trust me. You know, and this is all this is all planned out. This is all how it's supposed to go. And then someone So you have agency to change what I have planned, but I also have the ability to put you into matches, backstage segments, uh, vignettes, um, off-camera stuff. That's just backstage interaction. And it's the interplay of those two sides with all your characters and what I have planned that drives play along and makes a unique story for you and your company. Okay, so I mean, is the goal like, like uh, you know, I see, I see RPGs as you beat the monster, get the thing, right? So mm -hmm. is your goal the the audience satisfaction? Satisf sa Satisf satisfaction satisfaction thank you that's the word i'm looking for satisfaction <laughs> um, yeah satisfaction <laughs> that's, that's the only way i can wrap my head around it. um and i'm like that's not right i'm gonna add the other syllable it, like is it is right. it the fan reaction you're looking for or is it so because it sounds like we're like you are booking it this isn't like a a kayfabe battle necessarily in the ring right, right? so yeah you're playing you're playing a professional right yeah, who's yeah. playing the wrestling character so those yeah. two layers exist in the game uh and the 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 reward systems in the game are all about like you can get more cool stuff for your character. You can raise your stats, you can get new moves. Uh, you can get a valet. You can maybe gain more booking authority, 
change your gimmick, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but you get that by getting more popular. And so that's a stat, your audience stat. It goes up as you do well or other people put you over or whatever. Uh, so yeah, you get, you get cool stuff by getting more popular. You, getting, you get more popular by wrestling matches with people that you have a lot of heat with because those are the people we're most excited to see in the ring together. And then you get heat by doing wrestling stuff, cutting promos on people, having a good match with them at the beginning of the show, um, running in on their match to keep them from winning, all that kind of stuff. So the goal of the game is to uh, make your entire, grow your entire company's audience by growing your own personal audience and get, getting that top spot. Because you get a cool special thing if you're in the top spot, you get to say how the, how the, um, what you want to do in the episode, basically, once you're the top guy. Hmm. So, hmm. so um, for gamers, this is one of the reasons I wrote the game was because I saw so much relationship between how wrestling is structured, like in that weird double layered, it's competition, but it is cooperation. Uh, this is all in service of entertaining actually a third party, not necessarily personal gain, but you do want personal gain, like all that stuff really maps to role-playing as well because you're often in your D&D &D group even you're all working together towards a common goal but maybe you're in competition over I want that magical sword I want to get the most treasure no I want to kill the dragon like you want your character to shine you want to be cool you want to have spotlight but at the end of the day you're all working together um, so that actually maps pretty well into how the table dynamic of role-playing generally works for cooperative style games awesome so so uh you said mostly it's it's people that are already rpg fans like is this is this pretty like you know if you're into rpg systems pretty pretty relatable to what they're playing in other games um so it has a the i think it has a familiar structure of like a gm and a party of players where you all have an individual character and the, the gm is kind of in charge of the world and the npcs and all the the, the plot if you will um, so that structure is pretty familiar. And then it also, you know, when you do a thing, you roll some dice and see how the thing went, see if you succeeded or failed. Um, which I think is also familiar. Just in this game, that's abstracted out to be more the big wrestling moments and less every single little thing your character does. We only roll for the important stuff, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is built on a, this is actually built on to get a little nerdy, uh, it is built on an existing game system called the Apocalypse Engine, uh, which is descended from a game called um, Apocalypse World. Heavily modified to make, make it work for wrestling, but there is a community of people who play Apocalypse World and its descendants, which are games uh, people might know, like uh, Monster Hearts. Um, uh, there's a game called uh, Night Witches that just came out. Um, there's a whole kind of universe of, of these uh, powered by the apocalypse games at this point in the self-publishing sphere. So people know how apocalypse world games work, so it's accessible to them as well if they're in that community already. Um, so yeah. Awesome, awesome. So have you, uh, how long has this game been out? Uh, it's been out for just about a year. I ran a Kickstarter for it last year that had ended by the time we're having this conversation. And then it was done and printed and on the way to Kickstarter back, backers in February, I think, February or March. So wow. that's kind of the public release anniversary would be in a couple months. Nice, nice. Now, I, I, I don't know how <laughs> accessible this is for, for, for a lot of wrestlers out there, but have you had any, uh, any big response from anybody out there in the business? I've had a couple. I've actually had a, some really great response from um, – a couple of retired uh, wrestlers, like some some indie workers that I wasn't familiar with, but who came upon it one way or another, and uh, it was really great for me because, like, I'm not in any way involved with the the business. Like, I'm a fan, and I I'm analytical, and I like, kind of break apart what I see, but I don't really know wrestlers. I don't I'm not backstage at any any companies or anything. But I have heard from some guys who who have worked uh, that 
it captures a lot of the dynamic of how putting a match together feels, how um, working with someone else that maybe you're maybe you're not on best personal terms, but you're you're you have a job to do, and so you're going to do it, and all that stuff. Like it, it, I am told that it captures that dynamic pretty well, and that's really great to hear because um, I don't want to offend anyone, right? Like I don't want to be like, right. I'm, let, here's my game that exposes the business or or whatever whatever <laughs> that means, but to hear that that did um, accurately capture the experience of some guys who have been in the business is awesome. Like it was a really great piece of feedback to hear. Awesome. Uh, is there an aspect to this or is there a future iteration or add on pack? Uh, so considering our, our guests that we had on mayhem show and our, our co-host here uh, for a, a commentators pack, like maybe a roll to see <laughs> if Vince is going to yell at you in your ear or whatever the case may <laughs> well, be. I don't know, Eamon, do so, you have anything to suggest here? <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I, I have to see definitely. Um, yeah, so one of the one things that happens in the game already is that if you're not in the match, mm -hmm. uh, people who aren't actually in an individual match, creative picks one of them to be ringside announcer. And oh, okay. your job is to help um, creative kind of recap what's going on, narrate, you know, additional stuff, the crowd reaction, what the referee's doing, all that kind of stuff. And the announcer actually has a power to, to put over guys in the ring. If they blow a roll, the announcer can be like, no, that was actually awesome. I'm going to describe it for the viewers at home, how great it was, and make it seem like they didn't botch, right? Or make it sound better than it was. Uh, but that revolves around right now. Uh, but you could definitely, you know, break that out into its own thing. There's a uh, structure in the game for building your own gimmicks and building your own special moves. Uh, I kind of lay out how they're broken down and the mechanics that are associated with it. So if someone loves announcing and sees more of, of how that lives in the wrestling world, and I have not adequately served them with the uh, basic announcer power, then they could definitely build their own uh, with the, the tools available. Awesome, awesome um cool uh, so so it's uh if you guys want to pick it up it's uh over there mdpdesign.com mdpdesign.com and i noticed you said you, you there's a there's a pay you have a pay what you want kind of situation going on here too yeah so uh the game itself the basic game it's a 20 dollar soft co soft cover book um that comes with a pdf uh if you buy it through me uh, or a $10 PDF. And then there's some mini supplements that are pay what you want. So one of them has five additional gimmicks. The game has 10 kind of core ones that it comes with. And then there's, so there's kind of a, a bonus pack of five different kinds of characters, including like the giant. So you can play your, your Andres, um, your, uh, the, the, uh, the gatekeeper, you can play your Arn Anderson's like that kind of thing. Awesome. And then there's also a, uh, special guests um, mini supplement that's pay what you want, which is like, if you just want to play one session in someone's ongoing game where you have someone who like hangs around and isn't like super into playing the entire thing, but just wants to do one thing one time, you can be the, you can be the fan that, that gets into the ring. You can be the ring announcer. Uh, you can be the celebrity guest, uh, that kind of stuff. Wait, so, just, just pay, so Sorry. Do you say the fan that gets into the ring? Yeah, you know, the fan that jumps the barricade and dives into the ring uh, to, to, you know, break up the uh, the heels big comeback or whatever. I think we're we're going to have to slide this to that guy that jumped in the ring in Texas, uh, apparently. <laughs> uh, so I, I know I know our friend Matt Carlin has him on Facebook, so we'll make sure to make the connection here. Maybe we'll donate a copy uh, yeah. to him. <laughs> so those are they're, they're free to just check out. And then sometimes if people like what I'm doing and want to help support the game, they can throw me a couple bucks through the uh, pay what you want feature for those particular supplements. Awesome. Awesome. So what do you get? What are you watching these days as far as wrestling goes? So I was on a pretty big break from watching the weekly from watching raw. Uh, but the last couple of weeks I've gotten back into it with the, the tournament and the, the build up to survivor series. So I'm, I'm back in, I'm excited to see um, Roman Reigns win the belt. Uh <laughs> Only found Not that I think that's what's going to happen, but that's what's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I watch NXT because um, it's great. And I think NXT actually captures the game the most. Like mm -hmm. playing the game gives you a, an episode that feels like an NXT episode. Um, 
So people kind of want an example of a real world example that's probably the closest because it's just the hour, very straightforward stuff, but it's all like interesting and cool and character driven. Have you ever seen Lucha Underground? I haven't. So I've seen what they some of the stuff they put on YouTube, right? Some some of the matches and such. Okay. I don't have uh, the cable to get it. And I keep on holding out for a DVD set or something so I can just watch the whole thing, like the whole season at once. Um, so I haven't, but I haven't like watched every single episode. Because I, I think, but yeah, you I, might, love I think you might get some fun ideas the, for what an they're doing. Anyway, pack. sorry, I cut you off. Yeah, I think you might get some fun ideas for an expansion pack by watching Lucha Underground because <laughs> um, they straight up murder guys in backstage. <laughs> yeah. <seconds. laughs> yeah, I love how they've constructed a different world for wrestling, mm-hmm. right? Like they've, they've constructed a different set of rules for what wrestlers can do mm-hmm. in their, in their world, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, if you haven't had a chance, we actually had Chris Joseph, a uh, writer on the show, actually co-executive producer on the show a couple of weeks ago on mm-hmm. here. And he really gets into like kind of the storytelling uh, concepts around it. Uh, and, and some of the stuff they were coming from for it. So it was a really cool one. And I think that's something that's captured a lot of our imagination around here uh, with, mm-hmm. with that show. Yeah, no, I I totally agree. And I, like I said, I love what I've seen. I just try as, as a independent producer, I try not to pirate stuff generally. (laughs) So I just keep waiting for a way to just give Lucha Underground money so I can watch their show. (laughs) Right. right. Uh, And it's, you know, someday, someday it'll happen. It will be great. Um, Yeah. And I watch, uh, you know, I have uh, New Japan Pro World. So I, I, don't watch regularly, but every so often I I get into headspace to watch a bunch of uh, New Japan, and I caught kind of the first half of the G1 this year. Um, <laughs> it's just great, great stuff. Awesome. Yes. So a little spin on our usual question here. What's the best and worst thing about uh, RPG publishing? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> so the worst thing is that uh, you will not make any money publishing role playing games? Oh, just like indie wrestling. <laughs> it's yeah, it's a similar, it's a similar and, thing. And, uh, and, podca- I'm, and podcasting. I'm uh, in that, I'm in a position where it can be a part of what I do as my job, but it is not my entire job. Um, and I wish it was. Uh, but yeah, it's just it's a you know it's a niche it's a niche interest. Uh, there's a great community around it, but it's not the biggest community in the world. And uh, selling paper books is not the most <laughs> uh, lucrative thing in the world. But I think the best thing about it is that uh, I get to meet a ton of awesome creative people who come from all kinds of different walks of life and have all these experiences that I would never encounter in my normal day-to-day existence, like playing games with people who you know, are literal rocket scientists or who, you know, have, you know, who are athletes, uh, extreme mountain climber people, hotshot lawyers, like all that kind of stuff. It's just this gathering of all these uh, people to, that around a common interest, which is the best kind of community, I think. Um, so the people would be the best thing, uh, <laughs> but just like sharing and just sharing creativity and having people appreciate the weird stuff that I get to come up with um, is really pretty great. That's awesome. That's awesome. And of course, uh, as you mentioned over there, uh, you have linked over there at uh, ndpdesign.com uh, uh, videos uh, uh, poking around a little bit. Also using Google Hangout. I like to see mm-hmm. that. I love it. It's a production in a box. Uh, but uh, you can go see what a session is like uh, with the, with this game. I, I think that's really cool because I, I, I think you know, especially RPG, we talk about kind of barriers to entry for indie wrestling and, and going to that local show and not knowing what to expect. I think that's really cool that you're able to kind of say, this is what a game is like, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's funny because every game is different, but at the same time, um, there are commonalities, right, across across all of them. Kind of like how every, every promotion is different, but like when you see two guys in the ring, you kind of know what to expect, right, exactly. from, the, from when the bell rings, so. Awesome. Uh, anything coming up? Anything you're working on? Uh, yeah. So, well, speaking of supplement stuff, I'm actually gearing up to do the first full full supplement, which will be another same size book, probably thinner, but the same format book. 
which is going to cover uh, Lucha Libre, Strong Style, um, Catches Catch Can, kind of grappling, like British kind of grappling and indie wrestling as each of their own uh, kind of formats that you can then add into your game in whatever proportion you want, new gimmicks, new um, special moves, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to be doing a kick. <clears throat> I will be doing a Kickstarter for that, probably in shortly after the holidays, like early 2016. I'm kind of finishing up the manuscript and doing some play testing now on the new stuff. Uh, so that's the next big thing for this game. Um, yeah. Awesome. Go check it out. Uh, we always say support indie wrestling, but support indie game making. That's awesome. And check out support the support indie publishing as well. We appreciate it. There you go. Make it his own. That's awesome. Uh, so uh, and with that, hey, check out our stuff too. We're pretty independent. SorgatronMedia.com. Here's a look at what happened last week when we'll we write back with more indie wrestling talk. Um, all of the Android Priv Instagram photos with funny captions that other people made up. Uh, uh, maybe I laugh and smile and order a bunch more pillows on my phone and this relationship will become bearable. <laughs> you give me a tiny person? What's wrong with his arms? He's got lines sticking out of his arms. Uh, Matt Carlin, our friend in the mainstream media, is doing a real great job case here. And it's also a very visual kind of thing. Uh, so you can get a nice... There's a, there's a chick just getting blasted in the face! There you go. I don't even know where that was or who Whoa. that was. But you can go explore it over on IndieWrestling.us <laughs> slash blog. <laughs> There you go. Go check that out. Check out everything. Sorgatronmedia.com. And check out that RPG game while you're at it, too. Uh, so... Uh, it's time to go around the Indies. Not a lot happening in my neck of the woods. Not a lot happening in uh, Eamon's neck of the woods either as far as wrestling goes here. At least, I think, for the rest of the month, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, yeah. in the meantime, Matt Carlins pulls it together for us and lets us know what's happening everywhere else <laughs> with his great column over at IndieWrestling.us. Eamon, I know you're more familiar with a few of these feds than I am. Uh, so, what's happening that's worth talking about in the Indie Wrestling? Well, going off of uh, uh, what you can go check out over at IndieWrestling.us, uh, some cool stuff happened uh, uh, from a little promotion that's run by a guy by the name of Tommy Dream, but you may have heard of him, uh, called, House, called House of Hardcore. Uh, they had a pair of events this past weekend in Philadelphia at the ECW Arena. Uh, it looks like some really cool stuff happened. Uh, uh, the main event for the first night was uh, Tommy Dreamer and Tajiri taking on Eric Young and Ethan Carter III. So, like, very much an easy ECW TNA combination there very interesting uh sandman and sabu were also involved with that uh the next night uh i know that or excuse me on that same night they also uh inducted uh dean malenko into the uh, uh hardcore hall of fame the ecw arena sort of hall of fame thing and uh malenko also inducted uh eddie guerrero as well uh obviously this past i believe last weekend was the uh the anniversary of uh, eddie guerrero's passing so uh definitely a cool moment there getting their banners uh, in the ECW arena. Uh, and then they had their uh, event on the second night uh, uh, for House of Hardcore where uh, the Wolves uh, defended the TNA Tag Team titles against the uh, Austin Aries and Bobby Roode, the Dirty Heels. Uh, you know, it uh, seemed like a very much obviously a TNA influence there with Tommy Dreamer. I know they have some uh, working relationship a bit. So uh, interesting stuff to see there uh, from House of Hardcore. Uh, there's also uh, Jersey All Pro Wrestling. Uh, with their 19th anniversary show, that's pretty. I mean, I, I think there's a f you know a few companies that have you know have some single digit ones, but 19th I think is a, a long time to be doing professional wrestling. And, and they uh, they main evented with uh, Rey Mysterio taking on Loki, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, definitely a a dream matchup of many sorts, and, and seemed like that went over very well. Uh, a lot of cool stuff coming from Jersey All Pro Wrestling. Uh, there was also a one, uh, Al excuse me, Alpha One Wrestling out of Canada uh, that I uh, believe did some really good stuff as well uh, this past weekend. I also want to mention uh, St. Louis Anarchy, who uh, we talked about uh, last week uh, on the Indie Mayhem Show with Everett Connors. He uh, competed on their second night of their Ready to Rumble event against uh, another friend of the show in Zima Ion. I, would, I was told it's a very, uh, high, uh, very competitive matchup. Uh, it's also a successful weekend for uh, uh, friend of the show, Gary J. He uh, 
uh, would successfully defend the St. Louis Anarchy title uh, in a two out of three falls match against Davey Richards, uh, and then would uh, retain his title again the next night in another two out of three of falls match against uh, Jordan Lacey, uh, who is a long-standing member of St. Louis Anarchy. So it seems like some really cool stuff. Happened. Did you say Gary J? Yeah. Gary J. Yes. I was going to say he's listed here as Gerald James. Is there there something well, yeah, interesting happening he, there? He does have a bit more of a, a official connotation. Like I I know him as Gary J. But okay. <laughs> okay. His, his, his proper name, I guess. It's the it's bar now we're talking about, to. right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Ver bar now he likes to be referred to a little bit more properly. Um, my apologies, but yeah, yeah I mean, uh, it seems like I, he's been killing it lately over there. So very nice. cool stuff. Uh, for the folks over at St. Louis Anarchy. And yeah, it seems uh, a really cool stuff happening. Uh, I know uh, uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling uh, had a bit in Con- Connellsville. Apparently it was their Iron Man uh, tournament, uh, which mm-hmm. friend of the show Andrew Palace won, uh, defeating Jack Pollock in the final match uh, of that tournament. Even got some uh, <laughs> some streamer action to celebrate, which is... I, I don't know. I, have we discussed the streamer situation in, in, in Western PA? Because it's getting ridiculous um but no. It? oh no it's it's getting bad it's getting bad um have i discussed sweeper guy on the show yet from no. rwa no, yes we are. okay yeah we have discussed sweeper like it's guy, that right? bad that we have a guy that that goes to sweep the ring in rwa and then started people started chanting for him <laughs> and now he has his own t-shirt that says sweep 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 on the back this is partially my fault um <laughs> because they started and then chachi and i went and grabbed the broom and got pictures with him well all right Yes, I'm convinced that also when they have ROH, um, and the program has to go to the tail of the tape, it's because they literally have to get all the streamer tape out of the way. Right, right, exactly. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's kind of a byproduct of that, except nobody has a good throwing arm, uh, and and they use the the cannons. Well, I, so. I told you about what happened in Brooklyn, right? Mm. At the NXT uh, pay per view. Did you just, somebody got kicked out? Oh, right. someone, someone yeah. threw a streamer in the ring. The, no, the match, no, right? no. Someone did not throw a streamer in the ring. When, when um, Jushin Liger came out, someone attempted to throw a streamer in the ring. Had no arm strength at all. And the streamer bounced off the head of someone else in the crowd. Oh, no. <laughs> so oh, security really? Well, no, I thought, I thought one around. made it into the ring uh, right before the, uh, the ladder match. Yeah. I think the camera caught it at one point. Uh, that it might like, have, I think might like around the liar match too, but I remember like it it took it pulled focus completely from the ring for a second because they were gonna kick the guy out and everyone was like let him back let him like yeah it's just like it was innocent you know streamers I mean, just need to stop <laughs> though I, I, we've I, killed I enough it, trees I, <laughs> is it even trees is it even paper at that point um but no I I I think it's the novelty, certainly. Um, I think ROH, they're allowed to have it. I think... Um, for every it, match, though? For, eh, for anything, I really like, for a main somebody. event? Okay, like, I'll buy it for a main I don't think you should event. be throwing streamers for cheeseburger, necessarily. I mean, no, you should be, be throwing, honest. You should be throwing streamers made of fast food wrappers. Ooh, I like that. I actually kind of like that. Can we just throw... In, in, in fairness, Ring of, Ring of Honor fans do throw streamers for promos, which I kind of defeats the whole purpose. That's a little streamers. weird. That is a little weird, I, I guess. But hey, they, you know what? But, it's rare when Ring of Honor actually has a promo, so... Mm, yeah. I don't know about it anymore, but... Uh, <laughs> anyways. I, all, I say is, all I say is follow Japan. They do it right. You throw the streamers during in-ring ring introductions and then yeah then they clean it up and then we're good like and then, and then you know then the local show there's all the guys you know locally on <laughs> cleaning up the streamers <laughs> so, yeah um but anyways uh but no i no that's really cool uh, i'm oh, sorry uh did you did you mention Mary Elizabeth Monroe uh, on this one? Did we get I did, that far? Okay. but uh, two friends of the show, uh, Mary Elizabeth Monroe and uh, Samantha Starr, uh, uh, competed for the Vixens title with uh, Mary Elizabeth Monroe uh, 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 being victorious. So, and I'm not uh, up to them. I'm also not up on. Uh, she's going by Kelly Klein on Ring of Honor. Is that right? I believe. So. Yeah, they're doing the uh, Women of Honor stuff now. Okay, okay. Uh, and I believe she was going under the name Kelly Klein for the for that for those shows. Yeah, because I noticed her name and references changing because we we I follow her on on the Instagram the in the 
Twitter and everything, and, and she's usually retweeting whenever we, we talk about her interview and stuff. And I was just like, what is this different name uh, going on here? So I was wondering what the story was there. I have not been up on Ring of Honor. You know me, man. I watch every well, once in a while. <laughs> I go to, to all fair, the local they shows. They haven't showed anything with the Women of Honor yet. No, so. they haven't. No, no it was probably an old Yeah, the Women of Honor stuff's been more like, on like they'll, they'll post it on YouTube and stuff. But I don't know if it's come, becoming like a like a regular part of their like programming, but. Hmm. They should it would break up the the dude fest. The dude that... fest? You're not down with the dudes? <laughs> no, the, the dude... dudes and the beards and the cheeseburgers. I have not Human... seen, apart from Veda Scott and Maria, I have not seen a single woman at any ROA show I've seen on TV. Right, right. And, and even, like, are they having matches with no. those two? No, they're no, just... O- ODB had a match oh, once. Oh, jeez. But that wasn't even on TV, I don't think. Right, right. And, and that's but the it, thing. No. Veda's so talented. Those I haven't seen... Sorry. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. I was just going to say, for those that haven't seen, they've been, like, bringing in some different women to do, like, uh, one-off matches for Ring of Honor. And they've been posting on their YouTube channel, and they have a completely different, like, commentary team. Like, it's, like, a younger, like, clearly, like, two, like, younger guys, like, doing, like, the commentary. Like, so I feel like they're trying to make it, like, a separate thing, you know, Mm. like a... Like a separate... I don't want to say separate show, because they're just putting the matches up on YouTube, but, like... I don't know. That's interesting. I mean, we'll see how that goes. But hey, good, good that 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 uh, Kelly Klein. Well, I'm never going to remember her new name. Um, is is going to look over there and uh, and congrats to friend of the show Andrew Powell, who was just on here a few weeks ago, actually. So, uh, really good to see that. So, awesome, good stuff in indie wrestling this week. And uh, and actually, we th- we talked a lot. We had Joe Dombrowski actually on Wrestling Mayhem show tonight. Got a little bit into indie wrestling talk. Well, we we talked about commentary. We talked about uh, what's going on with GFW and, and, and Ring of Honor and everything and some other aspects as well. Uh, so please, I, re- I recommend you guys go check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com and check out uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show 496 for uh, everything we talked about there. So, And I think that's all the indies fit to talk about. Uh, any top? You good? You, you, have, anything, you have anything indie? I mean, going on with you, got anything up in your neck? <laughs> was there, Mike? I mean, there's Northeast Wrestling up there. I, I never get a chance to go out to indie shows because they're always on weekends. And now were. my weekends are pretty well booked, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, you'll get that job. By the way, anybody looking for a chemical engineer in the Pittsburgh area, <laughs> get him down here so we can start going to the indie shows with us in Pittsburgh. And, uh, and then we all can afford to go visit Eamon down in Texas. So For WrestleMania. For WrestleMania. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> it yes. all works out. So you see how that goes. <laughs> um, but no, thank hey, thanks, man, Mike, for for hanging out. Absolutely, Sorg. At Amen to please, uh, InspireProWrestling dot com, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. Yes, indeed. Uh, inspire, InspireProWrestling dot com. Follow us on Twitter at InspireProRes, and uh, I mentioned on the uh, Wrestling Mayhem show, but we'll have more information coming out soon for our January seventeenth event, which is uh, Ecstasy of Gold three. There's some cool stuff in the works, uh, and, and I'm very excited to uh, to hopefully share that very soon. So definitely go check us out. Um, and uh, please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. This and other episodes and interviews with the Indie Mayhem Show. Also listed at IndieWrestling.us along with the uh, Around the Indies column that we mentioned with Matt Carlins. And uh, please also drop us a line, uh, 412-206-WMS0 or good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. No, we don't do that on the show, Mike. I know, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I didn't do it. I just, it's, it's a mnemonic device. I have to do... I didn't do it. <laughs> That's the other show. We're, proper here. We're all business here. This is the damn indies, man. I apologize. It's okay. no fun. And just like some people in the indies, so, you have so to take the, it more so serious the indie than it deserves. show is more professional than the professional show is more. I'm confused. Because you, because right. you worked with big WWE, you haven't worked with indie uh, people. Well, it's I mean, a different you know, vibe. It's it's a small pond. I'm the big fish it's a so. small pond where everybody takes it far more seriously than it actually should be taken right mm-hmm. Eamon? yeah i would say that sounds about right that sounds about right <laughs> yeah <laughs> nobody listens as part of the show we're good uh so thanks everybody and we'll see you guys next week uh support indie wrestling and support uh, independent role-playing games like <laughs> Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.